Ah, uh, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to celebrity. Uh, yes, uh, again, good morning and welcome to the first concert of the Laptop Orchestra in 2019. My name is Maureen Ruhi. I'm the Director of Communications at the College of Sciences. And perhaps you know by now that the whole world is celebrating 2019 as the International Year of the Periodic Table. It's, a, it's an iconic scientific tool that I'm sure every one of you has met at one point in your schooling uh, years. And the College of Sciences has partnered with many different units of Georgia Tech to make this um, acknowledgement of the periodic table a year-long event. Today's performance is one of those events and it is the brainchild of uh, the School of Music's chair and professor, um, Jason Freeman. And we thank Jason and, and uh, master's student uh, Avnish Sarwade for um, making this performance possible. And the official, uh, the official um, representative of the College of Sciences is here. Matt, would you like to come? Sure. <laughs> thank you. Hi everyone, uh, yeah, so I'm Matt Baker, I'm Associate Dean in the College of Sciences and just wanted to uh, thank and welcome the orchestra for putting on this event. It is part of our year-long celebration of the uh, International Year of the Periodic Table and we do have a bunch of events planned, so this is uh, one terrific event. We also have uh, other events that I, I, I just got here, so I don't know what Maureen already told you about, but we have a, a Frontiers in Science lecture series that will uh, take place throughout the entire year with different uh, exciting lectures about how the periodic table interfaces with all the different schools in the College of Sciences and beyond. Uh, our next lecture is in February by Mike Filler, uh, all about the impact of the element silicon. So I encourage you all to uh, check out the, what is it, periodictable.gotech.edu website uh, for a list, complete listing of events. Uh, but without further ado, I'll introduce, oh right, uh, I wanted to let you know that there will be t-shirts uh, given to some lucky winners uh, at the end, so please stay until the end of this event if you would like to be a winner. And uh, now I will introduce the chair of the School of Music, uh, Jason Freeman, who will say a little bit more about what you're about to see and hear. So, Jason. Hi, everybody. How, how are you doing today? Um, like Matt said, my name is Jason Freeman. I'm the chair of the School of Music and the director of the Georgia Tech Laptop Orchestra. We've got 25 uh, uh, undergraduates here, uh, almost all of them are majors in our music technology uh, degree program. And they participate in this laptop orchestra, not only performing the music here, but also doing some of the sound design, and as the semester goes along, doing some of the, the, the programming for all the different pieces that we perform in concert. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the first two pieces on the program here before we perform them, and then uh, uh, you'll hear a little bit more about the second half later. Um, we're starting with a piece um, that has no connection I can figure out to the uh, periodic table of elements, but uh, we wanted to do it anyway. It's uh, by a composer named Earl Brown. It's written in the 1950s. It's called Four Systems. And there are four systems of staff notation here, but they don't have anything on them that resembles kind of Western music notation as you might uh, be used to seeing it. It's a graphical score where there's just different blocks, and there's explicitly no instructions from the composer about how to interpret them, how to make that into music. And so we've been working over the course of the semester to decide what rules make sense of how we make music together with this, uh, with this kind of graphical score uh, as a group. Uh, and these students have done all the sound design for that piece as well. Um, the second piece on the program is by uh, Daniel Iglesias, who's a, a composer uh, and also software developer at Google. And, and the name of this piece is GMO, which stands for two different things. It stands for uh, Google Mobile Orchestra, because he leads the Google Mobile Phone Orchestra, uh, but also Genetically Modified Orchestra. Um, and the way that we've interpreted it, it's, it's, a, it's a synthesizer that is actually connected over the, uh, 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 a network so that everyone has a copy of the synth on their own phone, but they can also control what other people are doing across the ensemble in different ways. And so we've taken, uh, in kind of the way that we're improvising with this, 
um, the structural idea of uh, fission and fusion. And so it starts off with a unified sound that everyone's playing together. And the first half of the piece, that slowly disintegrates as, as, as things kind of split apart and they get more chaotic and each uh, person on their own device is kind of doing their own thing. And then eventually uh, fuses back together by the end of the performance, but, uh, but it ends up being something very different from what it started with. Now, chemistry was my worst subject in school, I have to promise you. Um, so I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I do think this idea of things splitting apart and then coming back together in a way that's fundamentally different from how they started um, through that process of, of, of splitting and rejoining uh, has something important in chemistry that I was tuning out in high school. Um, but I think that that, 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 that that process matters, and that's kind of what we're trying to reflect uh, in this improvisation here. So, um, so Earl Brown, uh, Four Systems, and then uh, Dan Iglesia, uh, GMO.
we've got to do a quick reset before the next piece here. So uh, I'll tell you what it's about while, while, they're, uh, while they're rearranging their seating. This next piece is by John Cage, one of the most famous uh, experimental composers of 20th century music. Uh, this was written in the, the early 1990s for, uh, for choir originally. It's called Four Square. Uh, and it's a very unusual piece even for choir. It is uh, uh, each of the parts, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, uh, only has three, four, five, maybe six notes to play over the whole piece, which is seven minutes long. Uh, and uh, Cage is known for using chance operations and how he writes his music. And so there's, there's two layers of kind of chance and uncertainty here. One was in his selection of the, the notes that each of, uh, each of these groups would, would play. Um, he used chance operations to determine those um, quasi-randomly. Uh, but then the other thing is that uh, the musicians in performance get to make a lot of decisions about when those notes get played. Uh, each note uh, is held for a very long time, and there's a time range uh, when they can choose a, a range of, you know, within a 30 second time span or a minute where they want to start the note, and a time range where they want to stop the note. Uh, so I'm actually going to be putting a, a stopwatch in front of them so that they can see um, kind of the central time and read that against the score that they have. And they're making decisions by listening to each other, kind of thinking about the overall sound of the piece here, uh, about when they, uh, the sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses want to come in with each of these notes, and when they want to exit the texture, and what's going to make that all cohere and gel in performance.
Our, our last piece in the program today is a world premiere composed by our very own Anish Sarwade, a master's student in music technology here at Georgia Tech. Anish is going to come up and tell you a few words about the piece uh, before he does the performance. Please, Anish. Hello. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. And also, uh, thanks to Marie for giving me the opportunity to compose this piece. Uh, so I just wanted to explain a little bit about what's going on. So this is the International Year of the Periodic Table. So the kind of the goal is to sort of create a piece inspired by chemistry in some way. And so kind of in the process of this, I was kind of thinking about you know what are sort of different properties of materials or chemicals that can sort of fit well musically. And so I settled on water because it's an interesting material that has a lot of forms that lends itself to just playing playing with it in a lot of ways. And so this piece is organized into kind of four movements just inspired by different ways that water moves in different states, kind of you know, steam, clouds, rivers. And uh, it's not a piece that's notated in a traditional sense. There's only really one arpeggio uh, throughout the whole thing that you'd call standard notation. But a lot of the movements of the piece really take advantage of the fact that we have 25 musicians here who can kind of improvise and make their own decisions. So all of the pieces are kind of a mix between almost like a, almost like a sort of a conductor playing an ensemble as an instrument, and then also sort of free improvisations with different rules. Uh, so kind of, that's sort of the gist of how the piece is organized. So again, thank you for coming.
on now. Let's have another round of uh, applause for the School of Music Laptop Orchestra. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we have a couple of thank you gifts uh, for Jason and for Avnish. Uh, another round of applause for them.